Hi everybody and welcome to Josiah is Right. I am going to talk about a little bit of background on sort of George Romero and Night of the Living Dead. Athletes aside, very few non-native Pittsburghers are so closely associated with the city. The Bronx board George Romero is one such exception. He is Pittsburgh as much as anyone ever has been. Romero first came to the Steel City to attend Carnegie Mellon University, then Carnegie Tech, where my dad actually worked for many, many years. After graduating in 1960, Romero stuck around. As he puts it, Uh, I liked it here. With his partners, a bunch of wonderfully Pittsburgh dudes, the latent image was formed. Romero and his team made industrial films and TV commercials, the most famous among them a Calgon commercial parodying The Fantastic Voyage. He even worked with Mr. Rogers. In the 1960s, Pittsburgh was the third leading city in terms of corporate headquarters, so the latent image gang had plenty of work. However, when the big commercials came, those Pittsburgh-based corporations would go to the big firms in New York or LA. The latent image team became frustrated. The gang also got bored, so they decided to go all in on an exploitation film, specifically horror. Because as Carl Hartman puts it, they were easily sold and generally successful. The latent image team went to one of those industrial firms, one run by Hartman actually and Image 10 was formed. Why didn't they just ask Mr. Rogers? They each threw in $600, and Romero and John Russo got to writing. Each would work on their own in separate offices, and then meet to discuss their progress. They landed on flesh-eating ghouls, Romero's word, not mine. They weren't zombies yet. The fans later made them zombies. As aliens or monsters would have been cost-prohibitive, or potentially stupid. They borrowed heavily from Richard Matheson's I Am Legend. Romero's twist? Start at the beginning. How do people react to a suddenly horrifying situation, whereas Matheson's story starts years into its vampire plague? With Russo's opening setting of a cemetery and Romero's flesh-eating, they were off to Butler County. The cast and crew headed to Evan City, which is a deceiving name, as it's not really a city in the conventional sense, not a single skyscraper, and they started filming. The film was shot somewhat haphazardly as they were learning to make a feature film by making a feature film shooting over the summer with a hiatus before continuing to shoot in the fall, all the while living at the farmhouse. All the behind-the-scenes people ended up on camera, including Romero, in the only scene not shot in western Pennsylvania, the Washington, D.C. news segment. Some had very significant roles, such as producer Carl Hartman, as Cooper, his actual daughter, is even played by his actual daughter. Hartman even directed her in the scene where she killed her mother, played by Marilyn Eastman, who would later marry Hartman, meaning he directed his daughter murdering his wife, her stepmom. Though not at the time, but still, she murdered her. When Hartman directed his daughter to eat him, he had her eat a hoagie, his words, and that's Pittsburghese for a submarine sandwich. The characters were further developed and refined on location, with Judith O'Day improvising and Dwayne Jones enhancing his character Ben's dialogue significantly, as the character was originally written as a truck driver for one of those Pittsburgh guys, not the more erudite Jones. Romero largely shot it himself. Locals and their friends played the zombies in the bit parts. Those zombies ate ham, blood was chocolate syrup, true independent filmmaking. Post-production on Night of the Flesh Eaters was an all-hands-on-deck affair, as the cast and crew developed the film by hand. Image 10 then struggled to find a distributor. Why? The very thing that Romero knew made his movie special, the gore. In most other horror movies, when the monster attacked, the camera would pan away or cut to a new scene. Romero didn't pan away. He lingered, his shaky camera hanging onto every terrible gobble of that chocolate ham. Eventually, they found a distributor, the Walter Reed Organization. They distribute, but they had one request. The name needed to be changed to Night of the Living Dead, as there had been a previous film called The Flesh Eaters. They changed the title card in the film, but when they did so, they failed to include the copyright, which, apparently, was included on the title card with the original name. Remember that. It'll be important in just a bit. The film premiered on October 1st, 1968 at the Fulton Theater, now the Biome, in the greatest city in the universe, Pittsburgh. The film opened to wide release on October 7th, on a grand total of 14 screens in Pittsburgh. It was promoted heavily by the Image 10 team in the city as a Pittsburgh movie made by Pittsburgh people. Audiences were stunned. Critics, for the most part, blasted the film as sadism, as pornography. However, it made money. First for Image 10, and later for everybody else. Image 10, sadly, only made a profit on the film during its first eight or nine months of release. Remember that copyright thing with the name change? Thanks to weird copyright law at the time, the film would eventually fall into the public domain. Hence, 50 million versions on Amazon, not to mention all of those awful movies with Night of the Living Dead in the title followed by something like Darkest Dawn. Which, to be fair, I haven't seen and that was just my random example. It might be good. I don't know. 
One really cool exception is Night of the Living Dead reanimated, with unique animated segments in place of the original footage. The 1990 Tom Savini directed remake was even motivated by the copyright issue. It was done in part in the hopes of making money for the team, but also to reclaim the original copyright. It didn't work. Incidentally, the master of Splatter, Savini, was asked to do the effects in the original film, but was actually drafted and had to go to Vietnam. The film's legacy transcended the exploitive nature of the zombies and the gore. The casting of Dwayne Jones as Ben was hugely significant, and they just cast him because he was the best actor amongst their friends. A film with a black man and a white woman in the leads is still something you don't see very often 50 years later. The gut punch of an ending, while apt and profound during the civil rights movement, still has not just resonance, but relevance today. Good shot. Okay, he's dead. Let's go get him. That's another one for the fire. All that adds up to a film that is in the National Register of Films. Not bad for a bunch of Pittsburghers. That is Night of the Living Dead, and that is one of my favorite movies. As a kid, I did not fear zombies because I knew they were made in my area. Every other thing I was afraid of, but I wasn't afraid of those because I'm a Pittsburgh kid and they were okay somehow. I hated Freddy Krueger, Jason, all those things terrified me, but this one did not scare me because... I guess I knew it was a movie, maybe. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Before I go, I want to give you guys a free comic book. So all you have to do is subscribe and comment below, and you will get a free zombie comic book. It's a sort of, at least until I run out. It's an EC comic style anthology comic book. So it's horror, and it's featuring zombies, zombies, zombies. So that's all you get in this issue is zombies. There were only 200 of this comic book ever printed. So get yours for free before I run out.